Hello everyone, today is Monday, uh, June 29th, and I have another video from Trader Jim. And, of course, it's a very good video, and Jim talks about having confidence in your trades. A couple of really nice trades. Anyway, if you're interested in finding out more about the Auto Trader, here's our website. And I just wanted to show this trade uh, on the NASDAQ 500 tick. Uh, this is trading two contracts. Uh, using the open range filter so I just wanted to see how effective it is and there was positive slippage here uh, pretty good positive slippage as the goal here was uh, 750 so uh, this worked out pretty good and the open range filter is really really useful let's take a look at uh, Trader Jim's video for today I uh, just wanted to remind everyone there's no narration until about uh, 10 minutes into the video. You'll, you'll see the trades, you see the yellow box, which means it's live trading. And uh, so first we'll see the trades and then we'll hear uh, Jim's narration.
after June 29th. I am uh, done with morning trades a little after um, 11 o'clock so we can quickly go over uh, the two trades that I recorded. I hope the recording came out. I think it did. Uh, so let's do the open range uh, filter first. Uh, coming in, and I will show you the five minute chart uh, to explain my thinking. Uh, but coming in, I was uh, bearish and um, said the other, uh, the other trader on shorts. Uh, first trade would have been a long, but longs were disabled, so um, no trade. Uh, this template trades one contract, targeting 500, uh, so um, 102 tick uh, target with 100 tick stop. Uh, like I said, first trade would have been a long, uh, but longs were not clicked. Then a short came in, and I have to look at the recording. I wasn't watching this chart at all. I was focusing um, on my client's uh, charts, but just from the math part here, it looks like it almost took me out at my profit and then came all the way back up to the open range, but then finally uh, turned around and um, hit my target. So let me now bring over the uh, five minute chart just so I can explain my thinking. Let's uh, drag it over here. All right, let's make it large. All right, so coming in, right, so I wake up at six and then um, draw the initial lines. At nine o'clock, I check them. So let's say it's like around nine o'clock, right? Like around here. So, so here's what I do. And I do the same thing every day. So first of all, uh, looking at Globex uh, Sunday night, the opening up. Um, so looking at this, why did I draw the lines where I did? Well, these were the resistance areas, right? Um, and this was support, again, especially with the NASDAQ, don't worry about uh, drawing a line to the tick. Don't expect NASDAQ to do that or really any market. So you see like here there was a slight wake, but ultimately this presents resistance, this presents support. You see a few times uh, support over here. Um, so that's what I'm looking at at, at nine o'clock. So first of all, uh, are we trending or are we range bound? Well, I think easy to see. We are in a range bound market. There is no trend here. Um, <clears throat> but at nine o'clock, I know one thing for sure. Well, I know at least one thing for sure. At least one of these levels or both of these levels at some point today are going to be broken. This I know for a fact. No question about that. Um, which one? So that's when my personal bias comes in. Overall, on a higher uh, time frame, we are definitely trending down. On a five-minute chart, it looks like it's very range-bound, and it is all night. Uh, but on a larger time frame, we are trending down. So my bias is to the downside. Also, from, from my own work, I know that um, failing at 99.60, a number I spoke about <clears throat> uh, last week, a number of times uh, failing at 99.60, should result in 97.40 uh, with a couple of levels in between. One of them is 98.25. Um, but I was pretty sure that 97.40 would have to be tested before any attempt to the upside. So I set uh, the other trader on shorts. Um, and, and this was the trade. So. Uh, within looks like five minutes, um, by, nine by 9.35, the target was hit, one contract. Uh, I don't think I got any uh, slippage here at all, and, um, and that was it. So the second uh, chart was uh, Super Enco 6. So here's the Super Enco 6. Let's bring it back. And this was a very confusing trade, actually. I'm going to show you again on a five-minute chart what my thinking was. All right. Okay, so let's bring again the five-minute chart. So this trade took place at around, uh, call it 10.08. 10.08. So we need the bar on the five-minute chart that ends at 10.10. All right. Over here. Maybe let's make it a bit bigger. So... Indeed, they tested the 97.40, uh, uh, went as low as 97.30, um, and then came back up. So a reaction of 97.40 was completely 
uh, normal for me? Uh, where, where would I think they would go first? Well, right back to this area here, which before was support, right? We said this area was support. So they broke through that support, and of course, now they need to retest it. So as they were coming up and began to touch it, I actually set my average trader on shorts, but they broke right through it. So I unclicked the shorts on the other trader and just waited. When they broke through it over here, well, now I'm thinking, well, if they can break through this, they must try and test this level, the high, because um, that's just how markets work. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, they broke through it, now they're gonna retest it, and this should act as support. So as they came down, I put the other trader on longs. But again, they broke right through it, so I unclicked the longs, and I said, well, I guess they're gonna try the short anyway. They're gonna try and retest the 9740. So I clicked it on shorts, and this was the result here. Um, as they came up, and then the other trader confirmed a short trade, I took quite a bit of heat on this one. Again, came fairly close of getting stopped out, uh, but then they indeed reached the target with very nice positive slippage. This one um, has a $500 target. So after commissions, this was on this very quick move and you can see uh, by the time, when you take a look at the time, uh, this was a very fast moving market. Very, very often in a fast moving market, you can get some very nice uh, positive slippage when you trade with the other trader. But then this was one of those lucky trades, again, because as soon as they filled me, they decided, not nope, we're going back up. And when you look on a five minute chart, you look at this five minute chart, sure enough, this is where I caught this, this tail over here to get my, my, my goal, but then they turn right around. And sure enough, they tested this high. Now, I did take a trade here uh, with my client's account, not with uh, my funded accounts, because that's the same exact idea, right? I'm waiting for them to fail, because overall, we're still in a downtrending market. I'm waiting for them to fail, but if they were to go through, I would disable the short side. But they did not, and they failed, and, and I did uh, catch a profitable uh, short trade on this reaction of this um, resistance area. So I'm going to take a quick break, and then I want to respond to a few uh, great questions asked uh, from a video from last week. Okay, so just going to uh, respond quickly to one of the comments uh, by a viewer from uh, last week. So he wrote a few things. Uh, so first it was about confidence. Um, I think he said, you know, I sound very confident that price is going to go from one level to another. And he is trouble, I guess he, he is trouble being confident in his work as to where price is going to go. I can tell you that uh, confidence only comes from doing the same thing over and over again and seeing positive result. Um, I don't think it's the other way around. I don't think that you're confident first and successful later. I think you've got to be successful doing whatever it is that you're doing. And then from that, you will develop confidence. Really no difference than no different than driving, right? So when you first start driving, you slam on the gas and you slam on a brake and you don't know how much pressure to apply or whatnot. Uh, but after 20 years, uh, you, don't, you, you don't think twice about it. Really, it, it's the same here because I'm doing the same thing every single day. I look at the mar market the same way. I ask myself the same questions. And as far as um, I can see, markets keep doing the same things obviously um, with slightly different variations uh, different levels different prices but the behavior overall behavior of markets i think has been the same since they've been tracking markets uh, so so that's really all i can say about that i think confidence uh, just comes from repetition and, and def well i guess defining your edge and then applying that edge repeatedly with success, and so that's how you develop confidence. Another question I think you asked was, I think you were surprised to see that I use a five minute chart for um, intraday levels. I can tell you that when it comes to extreme levels, it doesn't matter what time frame you use at all. Uh, let me demonstrate here. So this is a five minute chart. Now what happens if we put it on a 15 minute chart? So a 15 minute chart, Let's drag it over. Same exact prices, right? Because extreme levels are extreme levels. Time frame is not going to change that. Let's put it on a one minute chart. I'm going to have to squash it a bit. 
Let's squish it a bit here. So, uh, so again, this is uh, Globex Open over here, and here it is, same exact areas. Time frame does not matter when it comes to important levels. Important levels will always be tested and retested. So a time frame up to a point, right? I mean, if I'm going to use a daily uh, chart, you will not see this. But if I want to trade the Super Anko 6 uh, chart, which is a tiny, tiny time frame in the NASDAQ, why would I need such a large time frame as a daily chart? A daily chart might be suitable for a much larger, maybe a swing trade um, kind of a time frame. Uh, but for super ankle six no it doesn't matter one minute five minute 10 minutes 15 minute you're going to see the same exact levels it's just that if you use a smaller time frame like a one minute you have to really squeeze your chart together so you can see and identify um these levels i think the last thing you asked was uh, what do i mean by the other trader confirming a trade so if we go back uh, to this uh, Super Anko 6 trade, right? So um, as price was coming up to test a resistance level that I showed earlier, I turned the other trader on short. So as it's coming up now, if it's going to just keep going and break through that resistance level without looking back, then the other trader who's only on shorts would not qualify a short trade because this template, whatever the template you use would not qualify a short trade if if price does not go down now if you have questions about templates and uh, which templates are best uh, those questions are really are better for for Randy who can come up with much better uh, templates than I can my templates are very simple because they're designed for a very uh, simple purpose I, I do believe in keeping trading uh, simple um, that's why on my chart on, on my on my five minute chart you're not going to see 18 20 different lines because i'm only interested in key levels i'm not interested in a lot of levels that only confuses me so my templates are very simple but it, it is sophisticated enough uh where i can confirm a short trade now granted this is far this trade was far from perfect as um, it took quite a bit of heat i'm sure it came fairly close uh to being stepped out and um I think I had a kind of very similar trade last week where as soon as I got filled on my target, the market just took off the other way. Obviously, I cannot know ahead of time what's going to happen. All I can do is uh, put the probability on my side and trade according to, to what I see. Uh, so I think, I think this was his major points. Uh, I encourage all of you to write comments, anything. If it's questions, I can answer. I will answer them if you have any requests or anything that's not clear. Uh, please ask. I'll see you guys at some point this week.